Greeting saints, we want to welcome you again to our study. Uh, before we begin, I want us to have a word of prayer. Then we'll get right away into our study. Let us pray. Our kind and loving Father, Lord, who art in heaven, we want to, Lord, come before your throne with gratitude in our hearts to thank you for the gift of life, to thank you, Lord, for preserving our lives until now. We are grateful that you have kept us in the narrow path of truth and that you are still working, Lord Father, in our hearts, the work you have begun in us. We are told in the book of Philippians that you will finish it until the day of Jesus Christ. We pray that that work, Lord, you may continue to do by convicting us of righteousness and of sin and of the judgment to come. We pray that um, you may help us to appreciate the sacrifice and the atonement and the intercession that Jesus is doing for us in the heavenly courts above. As we near the close of times, we pray that, Lord Father, we may, character may be refined and to be more like you, that we may be ready uh, to be translated. We pray that your Holy Spirit may be with us as we are going to continue to study. We ask him to guide our minds and help us, Lord Father, to direct all your glory, uplift all your name in our study and in everything that we do. That we may say, like John, he must increase and we must decrease. For all of this we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, saints, we are going to study what I want us to look at just basically in today's study is the basic sins that led to the fall of Satan. We are not going to look at all of them. We are just going to pick up one of it and see what the Bible teaches about that. Um, it's very important for us to understand that what led Satan to be cast out of heaven um the basic sense that led to the rebellion and to his fall in heaven, uh, that God is not going to admit us to heaven if we do have some of these things. So we really want to see uh, what the Bible teaches about the fall of Satan and what we can learn from, from, from it. We are going to start in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 14. Then we are going to go to other verses. Let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. This is what the Bible says of the fall of Lucifer and what led to the rebellion in heaven. Verse 12 says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sight of the north. I will exalt, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. This is the things that are taking place in Satan's hearts um, in regards to his fall. The Bible says that this is what he said within himself. Five times is that statement made, I will exalt my throne or I will ascend into heaven. I will set my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the side of the north. I will ascend above the height, the, the height, the, the cloud, the, the heights of the clouds. I will sit also among, I will be like the most high, sorry. So we see that Satan was really determined to do exactly as what he was saying. There seems that there was nothing that was going to stop him from doing that. Let's get more information about Lucifer in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 28. Um, the king of Tyre here is used as a type of Satan. 
in verse 12. Or in verse 12, the Bible says, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus says the Lord God, Thou sealest up the psalm, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sadius, the toppers, the diamond, the burial, the oxen, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the cabinacle, the gold, and the workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Thou art anointed cherub, that covereth, and I have said thee so, thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. A couple of things that we learn here about Lucifer. The Bible speaks of him as a created being that God had created him perfect. He was full of wisdom and beauty. He was clothed with all these precious stones that are mentioned here in verse 13. The sadius, the toppers, the emeralds, the cabinacle, and all of this beauty. He was perfect in beauty. And the Bible says he was anointed cherub that covereth, and God had set him so. So one of his responsibilities was to cover, to cover very the law of God. He was anointed. He was in the very presence of God. He had the privilege of being in the garden of God. And I want us to look at verse 2, more information on this. Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, thus says the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up. Thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a man, not a God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. So he was not only saying he was going to ascend into heaven, but he was saying he is God. So he had lifted himself up like that, according to what we see. Additionally, when we read in the book of John, John chapter 8, verse 44, Jesus speaking here to the Pharisees, he says, you are of your father, the devil, and the last of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. For when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of himself. For there is no truth in him. He is a liar and a father of it. Uh, so we see that uh, here Jesus accounts or charges Satan as well as being a murderer and as being a liar and a father of lies. When he speaketh a lie, he speak of his own and there is no truth in him for he is a liar and the father of it. So when we combine all of the verses together, Isaiah, Ezekiel and John, we see that Satan was such an exalted being. He was created. He was perfect in his ways. He was full of wisdom. He was full of beauty. Yet the privilege of being in the very presence of God, he covereth as an angel, covereth the very end, the, 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 the law of God. He was so privileged. But we can see clearly from the Bible, from the book of Isaiah especially, that Satan was not satisfied. He was not satisfied with the higher position. He was not satisfied with all of these precious stones that he was covered with. He was not satisfied with the gold, the emeralds, you know, the cabinacle and all of these things. He wanted more than what he had or what he had been privileged uh, or what God had given him. He wanted more than that. In fact, this led him to actually say in his heart that he is a God when he was a created being. And the Bible says he defiled himself. Um, he sinned against God. I want us to look at verse 16 and verse 17, the, you know, accounts for that. 
by the multitudes of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. And thou hast sinned, therefore I will cast thee as profane. Out of the mountain of God I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee from the ground. I will lay thee before the kings that they may behold thee. So God says he will cast him out because number of things uh, that we learn of him here is that there was a dissatisfaction in him. He was not satisfied. He was discontent about what he had. He wanted more than what he had been given. He was very self-centered, very selfish. We see that five times is that statement made, I will ascend into heaven. I will set my throne above the stars of God. The throne is associated in the Bible with power and government. So he was determined to set up his government and his power into heaven. And the Bible says that he was going to occupy the very place of God because in Isaiah, he speaks of the fact that he will ascend. He will sit also in the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. That is where God speaks. When you read in the book of Job, where the angels of God come to assemble themselves before God and the all that unfold, the unfallen world, the Bible says Satan also came among them. And that is where the congregation meets, in the side of the north. That is where God meets and he sits there in his throne. And, um, and this is where Satan wanted to, to be. So we can learn that Satan was envious. He was dissatisfied, you know, discontent. He was very self-centered, very selfish. And um, something that also the Bible mentions is pride. He exalted himself. And because of that, the Bible says that he had corrupted his wisdom. He, you know, he has corrupted himself because of his brightness. And God said he was going to cast him down. He had sinned against God. The heavens, you know, God had pleaded with him to repent of his sins, to repent of all of this. But he was determined. There was nothing that God was going to do to turn his, his heart to the other side. So we see clearly that those are some of the basics, if, if not all. Those are some of the basic sins that are mentioned with regards to the fall and the rebellion that broke out in heaven. We also learn from John chapter 8, verse 44, that Satan is a liar. He does not speak the truth because there is no truth in him. He does not rejoice in the truth. He uses lies and he speaks lies. He is the father of it, the Bible says. And the Bible says he is a murderer from the beginning. That's what Jesus had to say about Satan. Now, I want us to look at uh, just briefly, uh, this is going to be a very short study, but I want us to take and see the sin of envy because that's what Satan had. He was so envious. He was so jealous of Jesus that he wanted the very place that God had. He could not understand how Jesus was so exalted how Jesus could be allowed into some councils and he was not. And he started thinking and contemplating these thoughts in his heart. And, and I want us to look at that, that um, sin of Satan, the sin of envy, of the bitterness and the jealousy that was in his heart because of his discontentment. Um. Let us go to the book of Genesis. We are going to start reading from Genesis chapter 30, 37. Genesis chapter 37. Speaking here of Joseph, when he was still a young man among his brothers and his father. And um, I want us to see what the Bible has to say. We are not going to read all the verses. Verse 3. Well, let's start from verse 1. And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. 
These are the generation of Jacob. Joseph, being the seven, 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad was with the sons of Belhar and of the sons of Zelpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors. His father. And when his brethren saw that their fathers loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. Joseph dreamed a dream and he told it to his brethren and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed, for behold, we were binding sheep in the field and lo, my sheep arose and also stood upright and behold, your sheep stood round about and made obscenes to my sheep. And his brethren said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us, or shall thou indeed be have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams, for his words. So he was loved, Joseph was loved by his father Israel, more than all his children or his brethren. And because of this, when his brothers saw this, the Bible says they hated him the more. And he began to have dreams and relay them to him. And the Bible says it had intensified the hatred in their heart of him. Verse 8. Verse 9, sorry. He dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren. And they said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obedience to me. And he told it to his father and his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? Look at verse 11, which is our interest. And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the same and his brethren went to feed their flock, their father's flock in Shechem. So the first dream of uh, them binding the sheep. This was not the only dream. He had another dream that is described there, and where his mother and his father and his brethren, according to the interpretation of the dream, they were going to bow before him. He was going to rule over them in some way, as uh, his brethren were alleging there. And the Bible says in verse, yeah, in verse 11, that his brethren envied him. But his father observed the same. So you can see here that envy without having to read the whole story. Envy, hatred, and intensive hatred and envy and jealousy. It is what led to the brothers of Joseph having to sell him to the Egyptians as a slave. In fact, before they did that, they wanted to kill him. They wanted to kill him. So this is something that is very serious. And we are going to look more verses. We are going to look at more verses into this. Go to Genesis chapter 26. Genesis chapter 26. We are going to read from verse, verse 12. Isaac is in Gera. Um, there was a famine, he goes to Gera, he dwells there, and God promises him that he will make him successful. Uh, God cautions him to go into Egypt, he does not go, he goes to Gera, to Abimelech. And like his father, he lies that um, his wife is his sister, but after some time, the king Abimelech sees that it is his wife. 
But it's interesting what the Bible has to say from verse 12. Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year an hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forth and grew until he became very great. So he was becoming very successful in the things in when he would put a seed on the ground. You know, he would have large produce, the Bible says. And the Bible says he went, he waxed even great. He became more successful. And it was evident before everyone that he was becoming successful. God was with him. Look at verse 14. For he had possession of flocks and possession of herds and great store of servants. And the Philistines envied him. Now I want you to see what led them to, you know, after that what happened. Uh, the Bible says, for all the wells which his father's servant had did in the days of Abraham his father, the Philistine had stopped them and filled them with earth. And Abimelech said unto Isaac, Go from us, for thou art much mightier than we. So they, they were seeing his success. He was becoming successful. He was becoming a great man. And because of this, the Bible says the Philistine envied him. And they chased him away. They told him to go. He was becoming more great than them. And they chased him. And they gave him serious challenges, even with the wells that his father had digged. They claimed them to themselves. He had to move from well to another well, from well to another well. So I think we can see from this that the success of, 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 uh, of Isaac, when they looked at how successful he was, and they looked at their own position, it led them to, you know, to have bitterness in their hearts, to be jealous of him, that they didn't really rejoice in his success. And they ended up chasing him away from their land, chasing him away from their land. In fact, this is what the Bible had to say about um, Joseph and his brethren. This point is made quite frequently in the Bible with respect to what we read in chapter 37. Um, um, Acts chapter 7, uh, Acts chapter 7 verse 9. It says, And the patriots moved with envy, sold Joseph into Egypt, but God was with him. So what led them to sell Joseph, his brethren, was envy in their hearts. It was jealousy. It was discontentment because always envy is associated in some way with discontentment, as we have seen with Satan, because it was originated with Satan himself. So the brothers of Joseph sold Joseph because of envy. The Philistine, they envied Joseph and that led him to that they chased him away from their land. They chased him away from their land because of envy. And the Bible says, uh, Joseph's brethren, they hated him. They hated him. Now let's go to the book of, we are still in the book of Acts, chapter 17. I want us to see here, Paul goes to Thessalonica and uh, he starts his work there, starts to preach. Um, and Paul, verse 2, chapter 17 of Acts, chapter, chapter 17, verse 2. And Paul, as his manner was, this is, was when he was in Thessalonica in the synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. Verse 4. And some of them believed and con consorted, consorted with Paul and Silas 
and of the devout Greece, a great multitude, and of the chief women, not a few. But Jews, but the Jews which believed not, moved with envy, took unto them certain lord fellows of the baser sort, gathered a company, and set the city on an uproar, and assaulted the house of Jason, and sought to bring them out of the people. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and a certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, This that have turned the world upside down are come hither also, whom Jason has received. And this all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, one Jesus. So these are the Jews, two groups of Jews here that are distinguished. The Jews that believed and the Jews that they did not believe. When Paul would go and preach for three Sabbaths, he reasoned with them according to the scriptures, opening and alleging, speaking of uh, the prophecies of, of Jesus and showing them that Jesus was supposed to die. The Jews that did not believe, the Bible says they moved with envy. They moved with envy and took upon themselves certain law fellows of the best sort and gathered a company and sought all the city on an uproar. Can you imagine that the, the work the work that Paul was doing in Thessalonica, this brethren, they were going to stop that work. They were going to hinder it because there was envy in them. They had so much envy. They were so jealous of Paul that they set up the whole city in an uproar and they were accusing Paul uh, to, to the dignitaries and to the officials that Paul is actually doing contrary to the laws of the land. Very interesting, very interesting, to the point where they really wanted to kill him. They wanted to kill him. So this is a very terrible thing. You know, it might um, be lightly esteemed in our eyes, but envy is really a terrible thing. Jealousy within the hearts, the bitterness comes without um, having to appreciate uh, others' success or appreciate others, um, you know, where God is doing their work and exalting them and the position that they are keeping. When we are not able to appreciate that, envy is, comes into the heart and we are we are subject to a lot of challenges. We are subject to, to do things that, um, very terrible things. The Bible speaks here of Joseph and his brothers because of envy. They sold his brother to, yeah, to the Egyptians as a slave, to Egypt to become a slave. And um, we see the Philistines because of envy. They chased um, Isaac out of their land. And Paul, you know, the believers, the Jews that did not believe, the Bible tells us that they moved in, in with envy and they set the whole city into uproar and they charged them and they, 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 they laid false accusations against Paul and Silas. And Matthew or Mark, in fact, let's go to Mark. Mark Chapter 15, verse 9 to 10. Mark says, But Pilate answered them, saying, Will you that I release unto you the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priest had delivered him for envy. But the chief priest moved the people that he should rather release Barnabas unto them. So this is when Jesus was um, before Pilate. And the Bible speaks of the fact that um, the priest, the high priest, when they were asked, they moved with envy and they encouraged the people um, to choose Barnabas, to release Barnabas, a murderer, a thief, a liar. 
uh, in contrast to Jesus. Uh, but that didn't matter to them because what ruled their heart was strife, was was bitterness, was envy, according to what the Bible here accounts. It was envy in their hearts. Bitterness. Um, Psalms 106. Psalms 106. Psalms 106. We are going to read two verses. Verse 16, 17. They envied Moses also in the camp, and Aaron and the saint of the Lord. The earth opened and swallowed up Dathan and covered the company of Ab 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 Abiram. And the fire was kindled in their, in their company. The flame burned up the wicked. This is talking about the rebellion of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram that God opened up opened up the earth and it swallowed them because why they envied Moses and Aaron the saint of God when you read the chapter in desire of ages you see that Korah was so determined that he started um, envying Moses and he started speaking evil of him evil surmising and started to discredit him and the work that God had done, you know, through him. So envy led him to do all of these things to the point where he was so blinded with this sin that even when he was given a chance to repent and to see when to see his wickedness, he could not see it. He continued. Pride filled his heart. Envy filled his heart. He felt so determined and so right in what he was doing that God destroyed him. The Bible says the fire kindled in their company. The flame burned up the wicked. So it's it's a it was a judgment that really can teach us something about how God looks at the sins that we lightly esteem. The sin of envy, sin of jealousy and pride and hatred, how God looks at them, how God looks at them. Uh, let's go to the book of Romans. We want to see the, the things that are associated with envy, the other sins that are associated with the sin of envy. In Romans chapter 1, we are going to be reading from verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parent, without understanding, you know, covenant breakers, without natural affection, Im implicable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Such a solemn, 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 solemn account that we find here. Not only do the same but have pleasure in them that do them. So this is uh, the, the sins that are associated here in the same company with envy. Uh, Lord of fornication, wickedness, uh, and other things. So in other words, God views them in the same light. God views them in the same light. And God says that they are worthy who do the sins and who have the sins, they are worthy of death. They are worthy of death. The 
book of James, chapter 3. Now, the interesting part about the book of James is um, it is a book that is written for those that are going to be part of the 144,000. And the things that are brought up there in the book of James is some of the challenges that those that are going to make up that number are going to have to overcome. Uh, partiality is one of the things that is mentioned in the book of James. Uh, partiality is mentioned there, respect of persons. Um, but we also have in chapter 3, uh, when you read from verse 1, Paul speaks here of a tongue. It's a small member of the body, but he says what it can do, terrible things. I think let's just look at this. Um, chapter 3. I want you to see. Even so, the tongue has been mentioning uh, some examples here uh, about the beats in the horse's mouth and um, the sheep as well in the great sea that are driven by winds. Um, it says, yet are they tanned about with a very small hem? In verse 5, he says, even so, the tongue is a little member and boasted a great, great things. Behold, how great a matter, a little fire kindled. The tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body. It set it on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell for every kind of beast. And of birds and serpents and of things in the sea is tamed, have not, and had and have been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Terrible. Terrible. But he goes now. It's 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 you know because he goes now to where really the problem is. He says. The problem is the fountain of the heart. The problem is the heart. So he says when you are addressing the issue of the, 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 the tongue, the focus should be at the heart. Should not to try to change your words if you are not someone who speaks well. Because the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And so... He is pointing at the very root of where the problem is. But I want us to see from verse 14. It says, but if you have bitter envying and strive in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descended not from above, but it is earthly, it is sensual, it is devilish. For where envying and striving is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. The fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. So you, you really see here, Paul is mentioning the beta envy, the beta envy. He says, glory not in this. He says, this is the wisdom that ascended from, from beneath. It's not the, the wisdom that comes from above. And so I think we, 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 we are able to see from all the verses that we have read that bread Joseph and his brethren were led to sell his brother um, to become a slave in Egypt because they were moved with envy. Because they were moved with envy. The Philistines, they were envious of, jo of Isaac. That when Isaac was becoming more prosperous and he was becoming great and they could see his success, they became more envious and they could not take it. They could not take it. They drove him out of their land and they made his life more difficult by closing all the wells that his father uh, in the past had had with the agreement with the Philistines. 
and we see Paul uh, in the book of Acts chapter 17. The believers of the Jews, the, the Jews that did not believe, the Bible says they moved with envy and they set the city on an uproar. They wanted to kill Paul. They accused him and they started lying and saying a lot of things to try to discredit the work of Paul. We see here that envy is a serious thing, that God does not look fondly upon it. In fact, God associates envy with heinous uh, sins, fornication, wickedness, and all such things that I mentioned. He says they are worthy of death. You see, saints, um, this is a terrible sin. This is what has led to a lot of, you know, people, friendships having to break up. A lot of ministries having to, you know, sever their ways. A lot of bitterness in God's work. It has stopped and hindered the progress of God's work from continuing because of envy, because of bitterness you know, hatred and bitterness that is in the heart. Jealousy is in the heart. We are not safe. We are not safe if we are not able to rejoice and be happy of the success of others. When others are becoming more successful and we cannot rejoice, uh, there is this conflict in our hearts, the strife that comes up and this bitterness and jealousy if there is that in the heart, we are in serious danger. We need to repent. When others are spoken of well and we cannot take it in, that is envy. It is, you know, with everyone, in every way, whether it's in the workplaces, whether it's, you know, with preachers, uh, when someone preaches a powerful sermon, and uh, you are not able to acknowledge or recognize and give credit to where the work has been done. Envy. And you, you don't want to, you know, uh, see them as, um, as that. So we can see that envy is something that is very serious in the eyes of God. And the only thing that can cure this is when we come to the cross and we look at Jesus and we take our eyes, not of him, but we focus our eyes and our attention on Jesus. That is, only, that is, the, only, that is the only remedy for all of this ugly and terrible and heinous sin that is mentioned on envy. That when we speak evil of others, when we back up others and we are, you know, sowing seed of, you know, discord uh, because of envy that is in the heart, of bitterness that is there. And the only way to overcome this, the only way, the remedy of this to, for us to be healed from this, it is only when we look at Jesus and we look at the cross. In fact, when you read in Great Controversy, page 488, it's um, one of the quotations, it says, Satan invents unnumbered scams to occupy our mind that they may not dwell the very work which we ought to be best acquainted. The arch deceiver hates the great truth that brings to view an atoning sacrifice and all powerful mediator. He knows that with him, Everything depends upon diverting the mind from Jesus and his truth. You see, if Satan can do this, he is successful. If he diverts our mind and we start looking at others, we start comparing ourselves with others, Satan knows that he has won. He has won. When we start not appreciating and rejoicing and being happy um, with the success of others. It is because we have taken our eye. Satan has diverted us to focus on ourselves and to focus on others. And we lose sight 
of what is important, what is central. It is my prayer that we can see envy, some of the sins as God sees them. And we may come to the cross to confess our sins. We may claim the promises of God and we may be healed from this um, as we, we near as we are near the end of time. I pray and I hope that God will continue to unfold to us the truths as we continue to study. May God bless the reading of his word. We are going to have a word of prayer um, to close. We're going to have a prayer as we close. Let's, let's pray. Let's pray. Loving Father, we want to thank you, Lord, so much for the time that you have given us. We pray that, Lord, you may make impression in our minds uh, of this sin that has divided families, that has divided friends, that has divided ministries, that has hindered your work, that has led to the fall of Satan from the courts above, an exalted angel, but because he had so much jealousy, he was so envious of Jesus and he was so dissatisfied with everything that it led him, Lord Father, to corrupt his wisdom, to defile himself in that way. We pray that you may save us, spare us, Lord, from this. If it is indeed something that is found in our hearts, we pray that you may forgive us. Lead us, Lord Father, to the foot of the cross, to confess of our sins, to claim the promises in your word. We pray that you may help us and help your people. Please bless each and every one of us and our families and those watching. We pray that your Holy Spirit may continue to guide. For all of this we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. And as for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. I want to be just.